a fundamental teaching and principle of scripture to beware of those in ministry for sordid gain. If somebody is not willing to make tents, they shouldn't be in leadership or in ministry. Um, now, if the ministry is so blessed by God or grows to the point where you need someone or someone's full time, by all means, that is entirely scriptural to have people in full time ministry. But this is a general principle. We should all be willing to make tents. Peter even continued fishing after the resurrection. Um, Paul continued making tents. I continued working in the secular world. I worked six days a week filling prescriptions in Israel when I began in the ministry. Uh, Tim Worth has a job in the secular media. Except for our missionaries in, in the third world and in the Middle East and so forth, Africa and Asia, except for our missionaries, almost all of the Morio people are tent makers. They're all volunteers. Nearly all have secular jobs, uh, except, of course, the people who take care of orphans full-time and things like that, which is a full-time job. Uh, if someone is not willing to make tents, they're not candidates to be in ministry anyway. We do it because God has called us to it, not for a living. Now, if it grows, God and God so provides and God so leads, and you need people full time, that's perfectly scriptural. But be careful of people who go into the ministry for a job. Be careful of people who are like that. Thank you for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. Blessings, dear friends. Greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcasts and our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Morio catalog on the Morio website, morio.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon, and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen, will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morio catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless, and Jesus be with you.